expected the Rocky Mountains to be a little rockier than this. I was thinking the same thing. That John Denver's full of... Anybody can make a mistake. Come on! Stop being a baby! So we backtracked a tad! A tad! A tad, Lloyd! You drove almost a sixth of the way across the country in the wrong direction! So, exit Polini, and you enter Mike Riley. That's right, the life of Riley will now enter Lincoln. Riley, of course, for the longest time at Oregon State. And even though Riley um, has not had a season of at least nine wins since 2008, and some might say, well, why in the heck are you hiring that guy when his proven track record, especially lately, um, isn't all that impressive? Well, I, I think the reason is because he does have a lot of coaching experience and because he's going to, um, bring nine new assistants, so it's going to be a, a different environment. And maybe for Nebraska, a new attitude. But also, too, um, offensively at least, a new look. Gone is the spread formation, which did amass over 3,000 total yards of rushing last season for Big Red. And you're going to enter the pro-style offense. And we'll talk a little bit about Tommy Armstrong Jr., the returning quarterback, in a second. Okay, Because this is going to be the biggest adjustment on, for, for all of all the players you're talking about, probably for him the most. Um you know, it's kind of amazing when you think about it, too, because, you know, even though Riley has not had the, the biggest amount of success these past few seasons, remember, too, that Corvallis, Oregon, where Oregon State resides, you know, isn't exactly a metropolis for four- or five-star recruits. You, you're recruiting against mighty Oregon from Eugene, of course, the uh, California schools in the Pac-12, as well as the Arizona schools. And if you want to get real picky, you know, uh, the University of Washington in Seattle as well. So for Oregon State, it's not exactly easy to get some of the uh, the best players. And, and by the way, out of conference, include Boise State as well. They've gotten some some nice talent over the past nine ten seasons. So Riley, in his defense, he, he hasn't exactly had uh, you know the best facilities in the world. And Corvallis, you know, may or may not be the most attractive place for for you know, a college player to play. Now you enter Lincoln, Nebraska, and he's going to have uh, more. Um, facilities to work with, uh, better facilities to work with, and I think a wider uh, crop of talent as well to work around. So for Riley, maybe that's what he has needed. And again, a new offense, and you bring a lot of coaching experience to the mix. And personality-wise, the two guys appear to me to be different, him and Pelini. Pelini seemed to be more of the rough personality type, and you know Riley seems to be a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say just completely laid back, but maybe a little more friendly, um, you know, I look at Riley maybe as being more approachable. So maybe, too, that will be uh, a check mark in that uh, positive column for Nebraska. Tommy Armstrong, quarterback returning for Nebraska. And uh, to tell you a little something interesting, you know, Amir Abdullah, who had been the leading rusher for the past two years, um, a little over 1,600 yards both seasons, uh, obviously was the leading rusher for the Huskers. But now that he's in the NFL with Detroit, this means that Tommy Armstrong is the leading returning rusher. But don't expect that to be the case this season. This pro-style offense is going to be designed a lot of shotgun. You're going to see a ton of shotgun. And you're going to see Armstrong Jr. Uh, get rid of the ball quicker off the snap. This should increase his completion percentage, which needs it after last season, in which he only completed 53% of his passes, did throw for 22 TDs, but made several mistakes, 12 interceptions in the process. This offense, I think, once he gets used to it, and hopefully if you're a Nebraska fan, um, he already has gotten used to it through spring ball and uh, through August practices. Hopefully, if you're a Nebraska fan, um, he's already um, compatible to it right now. Um, you're going to see some speed sweeps as well using running backs like uh, you know uh, Terrell Newby, um, who now becomes the number one guy in the backfield now that uh, Abdul is gone. But you'll also see the receivers get more involved um, in the running game, too, out of those formations. So this offense is going to be a little more versatile. It's going to be quick-paced. And if Nebraska can adapt to this um, uh, early, then I, I think that they'll be fine offensively. Now, we talked about Newby. You know, he becomes the number one guy at running back. Also, too, Amani Cross will back him up. The receivers, I think, are going to be the strength for Nebraska. 
and that includes Jordan Westerkamp, who last season as a sophomore had over 700 yards receiving, five TDs. But remember, Nebraska didn't throw a whole heck of a lot last year. They're going to throw more this year, so those numbers should increase for Westerkamp. And Amorne Pearson L., He'll return as receiver, but really made his mark as a freshman last year on special teams, returning three punts for TDs. So uh, that guy is really versatile. And then you have Brandon Riley at another wideout, and Alonzo Moore should see time catching the ball too. Now, the not-so-good news for the Husker offense, you have to replace the interior of the offensive line. So you only have the tackles and the tight end coming back, and Alex Lewis on the left side, and Zach Stirrup on the right. But good news, both are seniors, so both have been around. And then as a junior, you'll have uh, Stephen Carter. He'll play the tight end position. So you have the majority of starters back for Nebraska. But again, I'm going to be curious to see how this offense does, not only without Abdullah, who is such a big part of that offense, but also, too, the change that they're making in terms of going to the pro style. And offensive coordinator Danny Langsdorf, he has NFL experience. He was an assistant with the New York Giants, but also, too, quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator now for Big Red. Now, talking about the defense for Nebraska last year, they were middle to bottom of the pack in the Big Ten last year. Uh, they gave up 26 points per game. That was ninth in the conference. Run defense was not very good. They gave up nearly 180 yards per game, despite the fact that they had um, all Big Ten player Randy Gregory is now in the NFL. But everybody else comes back, and that includes the other defensive end, Greg McMullen, but he'll become more of the focus from the opposing offenses. So we'll see how he handles that role. Both defensive tackles return. Malik Collins, 6'2", 300, um, incredible player. Last season, five sacks for the Huskers and Vincent Valentine, the other defensive tackle. You don't have as much experience, though, as far as linebackers for first-year offensive, uh, first-year defensive coordinator, excuse me, in Mark Banker, and that is David Santos. Santos, the uh, only returning full-time starter for Nebraska. Other two guys, though, um, we'll see how they do. One guy that they will have that you didn't see last year because of a knee injury is Michael Rose Ivy. Missed all of last year because of the uh, bad knee, um, but obviously he has uh, seen his share of experience. But we'll see if he's a little rusty entering 2015. And then a uh, compliment in the linebacking core, running it out is Josh Banderas. Defensive backfield return a couple of players um, who are gems um, in the form of Nate Jerry, Mr. Active to me for this team, 68 tackles. By the way, five interceptions. So that's your leading returning tackler and pick leader. And uh, Daniel Davey will occupy one corner. He has experience. And then the other corner is Joshua Kalou. And you'll have Byerson Cockrell at the other safety. Looking at the special teams for Nebraska, your return, your all Big Ten punter, and Sam Fulce last year, 42 yards per boot. And Drew Brown, one of those 2014 signees from that Nebraska class, you know, last year saw action as a freshman. So he returns as a sophomore for the 2015 Huskers place kicking. Now let's chit chat about the schedule, and BYU is who you open with. And as if it wasn't a big enough challenge to face a Cougar team uh, that's going to be hard to stop against the run. And we don't know which of these five players are suspended, but Nebraska, the first game Mike Riley announced um, you know, earlier in the month that five players for the Huskers will not play in the opener. Um, at least as of August 19th, we don't know who those players are. But Riley did say this. He said, can kick off, it will be obvious. So that can't be a great sign at all if you're Nebraska, as if it wasn't a, a tough enough challenge to get BYU to open with, even though you're playing them at home, you're going to be without five of your players. So talk about a big challenge. Nebraska faces one in the opener. And then later in the month, you go to Miami to play the Hurricanes. You know, Miami may not be the Miami of old, but still playing on the road and playing in a pretty difficult South Florida environment. Uh, that will be another tough game on the non-conference slate. So you can tell by those two conference non-conference games for the Huskers in September, their non-conference slate's a little tougher than normal. Then we get to the Big Ten uh, come October. Good news is that you don't face Ohio State. You don't face Michigan. You don't face Penn State from the east. Um, you do get Michigan State, but you don't play them until the month of November. Bad thing for Nebraska on the schedule in terms of the Big Ten, you don't get your bye week until late November. That's way too late in the season. In fact, by the time uh, you play Rutgers, it will be the 11th game of the year without a bye week, and that's on the road, and it's the week after the Michigan State game. So that could be troublesome for Big Red. And then you close the season out against one of your rivals in the Big Ten. That's Iowa, but you play them at home the day after Thanksgiving. 
And although I think the Huskers are going to lose a couple of conference games, remember, the Big Ten West, I think, is wide open. So I could foresee the Huskers winning in a tie break in the standings over Wisconsin to represent the West in the Big Ten championship game. So I'm going to say Nebraska 9-3 with a 6-2 conference record and winning in a tie break for the West and representing that division in the Big Ten championship game. But the odds of beating Ohio State are going to be long. So I think Nebraska, even though I think they'll get to the title game in the conference, I don't think they'll win it. That's my look at Nebraska.